Question number two, Alec Rowley. Presiding officer, Labour has been calling for and will very much welcome such a debate on how we invest in Scotland's future moving forward because we cannot continue with failed Tory austerity. Presiding officer, on Tuesday before the programme of government was announced, a set of statistics detailing the performance of our National Health Service were published. Our hospitals don't have enough doctors, nurses and midwives. Hundreds of operations have been cancelled because hospitals cannot cope. And two years on from the Health Secretary promising to abolish delayed discharges, over a thousand patients were stuck in hospitals when they were fit to go home. These surely dreadful figures, but perhaps the most damning of all, one in five young people needed treatment for med med mental health and they had to wait longer than the agreed waiting time. What does the First Minister propose to do about this? First Minister. Well, Alec Rowley, and uh, firstly, can I uh, take the opportunity to welcome Alec Rowley to his place, albeit temporarily, but I'm sure we'll enjoy our exchanges over the next uh, few weeks. Uh, firstly, Alec Rowley raises a number of extremely important and serious issues. Let me just uh, say, uh, before I address uh, what we are doing about these issues, uh, a number of points that he alluded to. Firstly, in terms of uh, people working in our National Health Service, there are almost 12,000 more people working in our National Health Service today than was the case when this government took office. In terms of delayed discharge, we see the bed days lost to delayed discharge uh, reducing, and we are determined to reduce that even further. Uh, the rate of uh, cancellation of hospital uh, operations, uh, while there will always be a small number of hospital operations cancelled for a number of reasons, that rate had remained uh, steady over the years and has not uh, significantly uh, increased. Uh, so that's some of the context to this. In terms of uh, what we are doing, though, I've spoken about this many times, as have other members. Uh, we have a health service that you know, is not facing unique challenges, but is facing the challenge of rising demand, partly from an ageing population, partly in terms of some of the issues around mental health that Alec Rowley raises from the reducing stigma uh, of mental health. And we have a challenge now, in common with many other countries, of both investing in and reforming our health service so it can meet those challenges for the future. So in terms of investment, uh, the health budget today is around £3 billion higher than it was when this government took office. And we have given a commitment to a further £2 billion increase over the life of this parliament. So that's why in the programme for government, I committed to at least a real terms increase in the resource budget next year. And I say again, as I said many times to Kezia Dugdale, uh, that is a, a higher commitment to NHS investment than Labour uh, made in its manifesto for the Scottish Parliament elections. Uh, but secondly, we are committed to a programme of reform in our National Health Service. That means transferring more of the health budget into community and primary care and mental health services. So investment and reform, these are the challenges we are taking forward. Some of these uh, issues are difficult and will involve difficult decisions uh, in this chamber. But I would ask all members across uh, the chamber to get involved in these discussions so that collectively we take the decisions now that will equip our health service for the future. Alec Rowley. I would certainly, as, as the First Minister, would expect dispute the, the figures in terms of who committed to what. But actually, it's more important than that, because too many children in Scotland are being let down. And that, that is the key serious issue that we have here. My approach has always been on these big issues that we should try and work together with the government to find a solution. But a year ago this week, Labour published a proposal that would end the scandal of poor support for child mental health. And we put these proposals directly to the First Minister. We called for three things. We called for a review of why so many children were being rejected from treatment. We asked for a guaranteed access for every secondary school to a qualified and experienced school counsellor. And we ask for this government to finally use the tax powers of the Scottish Parliament to stop the cuts to local public services and invest where investment is needed. And nowhere is it more clear that we need to invest than in mental health services and in particular children's mental health services. The first, 
The First Minister said she would look at that plan closely. Did she do this? Did she take on board any of these proposals? And if so, can she give us an update on what progress has been made? First Minister. Uh, well, I, I, I do recall uh, the session of First Minister's questions where uh, those plans uh, were raised. I did give a commitment then uh, to consider them as part of our finalisation of the mental health strategy. And yes, we have taken forward many of the things that Alec Rowley talks about. In fact, uh, one in particular I'm surprised he doesn't know about, because I think it was in uh, this chamber at a session of FMQs that announced that we committed to, for example, a review of CAM's rejected uh, referrals. And we're beginning uh, that review, which was the first of the uh, issues that Alec Rowley referred to. Uh, in terms of school provision, we also committed in uh, our uh, mental health strategy to review of personal and social education in schools to make sure that vital link between education and uh, health services is recognised and strengthened. Uh, and uh, lastly, in terms of tax, we've had many uh, debates in tax over the past couple of years. Last, uh, in last year's budget, of course, we did take the decision uh, we took around uh, the threshold for the higher rate of tax uh, opposed by the Conservatives uh, and of course Labour uh, encouraged us to go further and as I've just debated with Ruth Davidson I do think the time is right now to look at how we fund our public services uh, in the longer term. That is a, a debate that I hope and expect uh, Labour will take part in constructively but on the issues of mental health as I've said before we're seeing rising demand for mental health services that puts an onus on the government to make sure the services are there. We are committed to the work to ensure that that is the case so we do see uh, improvement in waiting times for example we see a significant increase in the mental health workforce to support those expanded services and we'll continue to take the action and invest the resources that bring about those improvements. Alec Bradley. President officer, I'm certainly aware that this week's programme for government does have clear commitments to look at this and that would be welcome and Labour will work with the government on that but what we're saying is we actually need action action speaks louder than words. I don't know if the First Minister or the Deputy First Minister have ever been in schools and talked to teachers about the importance of having counselling services. I have, and I know that schools value those services and want to see those services. The government has a target, but that target has never been met. More than 9,000 young people have waited too long for treatment. This cannot be allowed to continue, and it is your government that needs to do something about this. Not next year, but start to do it now. I say actions speak louder than words. I ask the First Minister, how many times does the issue of children's mental health services need to be raised in this Parliament before you and your government will do something about it? I... Again, succinctly, First I, I Minister. Think... Alec Rowley is, and I mean this genuinely, a very considered and a very uh, fair politician and I often appreciate the way, uh, the very constructive way in which he raises issues and I would uh, include today in that. But I do think Alec Rowley has been uh, a tad unfair in terms of our character, his characterisation of the, the government's approach. Take just some of the issues he's raised. I already referred to the review of uh, rejected referrals. Uh, Labour called for a review and it is a review that is now happening. But in terms of uh, additional resources in schools, the pupil equity funding uh, that we put in place last year is already supporting head teachers and teachers in schools where they think that is appropriate to help them uh, close the attainment gap, invest in measures like that. That's concrete action underway uh, right now as we speak. The mental health strategy, uh, which of course is now finalised and being implemented, backed by new resources, is helping us to continue the progress we've already made on increasing the workforce in CAMS and also reducing the time uh, that young people wait. So these are hugely important issues. I, you know, I'm not standing here saying that there's not more work for us to do. Of course there is. Uh, and I would expect and, and, and welcome the fact uh, that those who care about these issues press us to go further and faster. That is absolutely legitimate. What I don't accept is Alec Rowley's characterisation that the government has done and is doing nothing, because that is manifestly not the case. So I would encourage Alec Rowley, and I certainly will play my part in this, let us come together where we can to make sure we take the right decisions uh, to uh, ensure that young people get access to the mental health services that they do deserve and do need.